I've made a video game. It's called Reiterate and you should probably go and wishlist it on Steam. If you'd like to, there will be a link in the description, just like there is a link in my pocket. The reason that I talk about Reiterate so much is that I've learned a lot from making it. And one of the key things I've learned is how to keep myself motivated. Reiterate began development in October of 2020. And by the time it comes out in January, that will have been 15 months that the game has taken to get from me having the idea to something that you can play and spend money on. And over that time, I had to do a lot of self-reflection and finding ways to keep myself going when it seemed like a terrible idea and like I'd rather go do something else, like plumbing. I went through a lot of self-doubt, failure, hating myself, hating everybody else, quitting, restarting, quitting again, and restarting again. But finally the end is in sight and the game is nearly ready for release. So having learned those lessons the hard way, I thought I would share them with you, so that if you are a solo indie game dev who is currently trying to get their project over the finish line, maybe something that I have learned can help you out a little bit, and you won't have to hate yourself quite as much as I did. So, tip number one. Now this sounds like a negative, but I promise it's really not. The truth is, my friends, nobody cares about your game as much as you do. It doesn't mean nearly as much to anyone else as it will to you. For me, January the 13th, 2022 is a big day. It is a milestone day. It is the day that I can finally say, I have done this thing. It is out there in the wild. It is a whacking massive great achievement for me personally on a personal level to have accomplished something of such grandeur for everybody else it's Thursday and that might sound demoralizing but really it shouldn't because what it means is there's nobody out there who is anticipating your failure if you're a solo indie game dev without anything substantial to your name nobody expects you to do anything nobody's thinking well it better be the game of the year Nobody's taken time off work to play your game on release. Nobody set aside hard-earned savings to make sure they can buy it on day one. Nobody has anything invested in your game other than you. And what that means, and this is the liberating part, is that the only person you have to please, in the end, is yourself. The only person whose opinion matters, if I'm honest, is yours. As long as when you put that game out it's to a standard that you're happy with, that will do. That is all you need to accomplish. You haven't invested a hundred million dollars. You haven't delayed your game 19 times on a yellow background after making one of the most comprehensively amazing RPGs of all time. You don't have shareholders, board members, brand deals. It's just you and your game. So join me in celebrating the fact that thankfully, nobody cares. At least not as much as we do. If you go and talk to some of those marketing gurus who make an obscene amount of money from giving talks in lecture halls to 300 very enthusiastic but possibly slightly misguided students, you may have heard about the overwhelming number of new releases that come out on Steam every single day. In fact, they would have charged you to tell you that information. They will then go on to tell you that discovery of your game is next to impossible without a sizable marketing budget, and that you need to be firing on all cylinders through every channel, annoying your friends and pushing your game at every opportunity. On an unrelated note, my game releases on January 13th and you should go and wishlist it now. What they won't tell you, and what I think you really need to keep in mind, because it will give you a sense of perspective and accomplishment, is just how unlikely you were to get there in the first place. Yes, there might be upwards of 20 games coming out per day on Steam, but there is an infinite number of games that aren't coming out on the same day. I don't want to throw shade at anyone, in fact I'm making this video for the benefit of some of these people, but if you go on YouTube and type in the word devlog, then just scroll for a while, you'll see dozens upon dozens, hundreds upon hundreds of solo game development projects that, let's be honest, you're never going to play. There's no metric for tracking the people who quit. There is no counter somewhere that will give us data on how many people give up on their game. But if I had to pull a number out of thin air with no mathematical basis in fact whatsoever, I would probably estimate that for every game that does release on Steam, there are maybe 10 that won't, ever, at all. And it's not just bedroom coding indie hobbyists. This happens to massive studios with more money than any of us will ever see in our lifetimes. Go and ask Rockstar where Agent is. And if you don't know what Agent was supposed to be, I recommend giving it a quick Google. There are hundreds of studios out there with actual budgets, publishers and shareholders who have had games well into development get canceled and shelved forever. It happens all the time. And again, just to reiterate, they are proper studios with dozens of people working there. 
So how should this motivate you? Well, what it means is if you can just get your game out there at all, into the realm of where people can play it, you've already succeeded. You've done something that most people statistically will not ever do. You have won the game of game development already and everything past that is a bonus. So if you make that your goal, just to have something out that people can buy and play, then it's so much less pressure on you. Just make it, get it to the finish line because that finish line is closer than you think it is. And now to absolutely contradict myself. There was a point during Reiterate's development where I had quit. I'd cancelled it, I'd scrapped it entirely and I was never going back to it. That point came a couple of months after I'd released a playable alpha build and I hated it. And I think if we're all being honest, a lot of other people hated it too. The pressure of fixing all that was weighing down on me so much that I vanished from YouTube for five months. And the thing that got me out of that that got me over it was admitting to myself that I didn't want to do it anymore and coming to the realization that really I didn't have to. Yes it would have been a minor disappointment to many of you that have watched the devlog series but I don't think it would have been a surprise and like I said nobody cares as much as I do. Most people would have seen the video about how my game was cancelled said oh no how sad and then gone on with their day. It wouldn't have mattered for more than a suspiciously advertiser friendly 11 minute long video and then everybody would have moved on. Having that realization that I could just stop because it wasn't good for me anymore is actually what let me come back. Nothing was stopping me just shelving it, throwing it into the bin and moving on with my life. I was putting an unreasonable amount of pressure on myself for a game that I had no obligation to keep working on. If you're anything like me, you're putting a lot on your own shoulders. You expect things of yourself and you want to produce and succeed in a way that people around you maybe don't understand. But what you need to understand is that it's you doing that, nobody else. And if that pressure that you're mounting on your own shoulders is ironically what's stopping you from succeeding, then chuck it in the bin. You don't need that. You don't actually need this game to come out. You can throw the pressure away with the game if you want. Because if you do, you might realise that underneath that pressure is actually the motivation you were looking for to get back to it in the first place. Once you take the pressure off, maybe you'll find that spark again that brought you here to begin with. I did, and that's why I'm here to tell you about it. And also to justify all the clickbaity titles on the devlog series about how many times my game's been cancelled. It really genuinely was. More than once. And it wouldn't be ready to release now if it hadn't been. Listen. Social media is bad for you. You probably know this already, but what you tend to see on social media is people's highlights. Their best bits. The bits they want you to see. And that applies to YouTube as well. So many of your favourite game developer YouTubers are out here showing you their progress and the bits they've done that they're proud of. Because we all want you to think we're quite brilliant, actually. But the truth is everybody's going through the same thing. Everybody fails all of the time. All of the ups and the downs and the successes and the failures and the dizzying highs and the soul crushing lows. Everybody has them. It's just not being shown to you. And I think a lot of the time that might be giving you the wrong impression. It might be making you think, hey, what's wrong with me that I'm taking over a year to make a super standard 2D platformer the easiest genre on earth? Or it might be making you think things like, I'm a fraud for making a channel about game design because nobody can play anything because I can't finish a game to actually back up my points because I'm a complete crushing failure of a person. For example, all of your heroes, with all of their hundreds of thousands of subscribers, don't forget to like and subscribe, are all exactly the same, I promise. Every day they have the same struggles, the same failures, the same problems. They just don't show you. Sometimes it seems like maybe other people just inherently succeed. Like they don't struggle or don't have to work hard at anything, but they do, I promise. You just don't see it. That's why I wanted to make videos like this. Because I don't want you to think there's anything special about me. Yes, I might have an ego the size of Switzerland, and yes, I might always be right all of the time. But other than that, I'm just a guy. Just a guy who spent the entirety of his life playing video games, formed some opinions about those video games, and then wanted to take those opinions and use them to make better games. That's it. And if I can do it, so can you. Obviously you won't do it as well as I do because I am a golden god, but you can try. And the final motivational tip for today, the final thing that drove me over the finish line to get Reiterate done and out to you, and what I think might be the most important driving factor of all, is this. 
by now I don't think it's a secret that I started this channel because there were certain things I believe about good game design, and I was getting very annoyed at people being wrong on the internet, and if there's one thing we don't need more of, it's people being wrong on the internet. So here I am, to spew opinions unprovoked into the vast uncaring void, and try and make some games to back up those opinions so that you see the validity in what I'm trying to tell you. And the thing that motivates me more than anything else is that if I don't do this, if I don't put out games that represent what I think is good design philosophy, then I'm leaving this hobby that I love that has basically shaped my opinions on media and got me through some very dark times in my life. I'm leaving all that in the hands of somebody else. Now ultimately what I do might not make a difference. I am just one man making games and videos. It may not in the end matter at all. But at least this way, if gaming ever does tank irreparably off the cliff into predatory monetization tactics, bad design decisions, discourse that centers on everything but the game itself, things that are just awful forever and a day, I can stand by the burning wreckage of the thing that I loved once and say at least I tried. Now if you're not a hateful, spite-driven egomaniac like I am, you might be wondering how you take this and use it to motivate yourself. Well, you started making games for a reason. There was something in you that made you want to open up whatever program it is you make games in and put something to code or make something move on a screen, right? And if you don't carry on with that, if you don't eventually finish something, even if it's not the project you're on right now, did that reason matter? Was it valid? Or was it just a whim that you had one day? Because that's fine if it was. If game development you've realised isn't actually for you, then for the love of God, stop doing it. If it's not something that you think, I should be doing this, then don't do it. But if that reason still plays in the back of your head, if you still have that drive, even when it's hard, even when it's when you can't open your project, when you can't stand to look at the thing you're making, if that thing in the back of your head is still there that says, I will one day make something good, you have to validate that for yourself. Because if you don't, then that reason won't matter. And you know, and I know this better than anyone, that reason will drive you mad. Because if you don't, someone else will. And maybe one day you'll play something that was made by someone else and you'll think, I could have done this better. I had a better idea, I would have done this differently and it would have been good and so brilliant and amazing and it would have changed the world, but you didn't because the reason left you. You've got to keep that going, you've got to remember there was a reason you got here in the first place. Find it, cling to it, fight for it, finish something, it does matter, it is important. I really hope that this video has helped you in some fashion, um, or at least that you're in some way interested in the way that my slightly bizarre brain functions it's led to a game coming out so at least i can point to something and say there look see i do know what i'm talking about because it got my game out onto steam where you can buy it speaking of which you should probably go and wishlist reiterate on steam or buy it if it's out now and you're watching this after the 13th of january and then you should go ahead and like this video if you liked the video and then if you did like the video you should screw this is the hardest part of the video. If you've liked this video, you should like the video that you liked so that I know you liked the video and then subscribe for more videos like the video you liked because you liked the video and wanted to like the video that you'd liked. And I will see you the next time I'm thinking, hey, let's talk game design.